Live from Toronto, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering Blockchain Futurist Conference 2018. Brought to you by theCUBE. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage, day two of Untraceable Presents Blockchain Futurist Conference where the industry insiders and community get together to talk about the future. Really great event, great content on stage, of course, with the live coverage bringing to you here with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Our next guest is Gabriel Rene, co-founder and executive director of Versus. Okay, one of the big sponsors here. Congratulations and thanks Thank for sponsoring. You. But great, really great story you guys have in a space that we're interested in. Um, but a lot of people want it to go faster. This is the new creative environment. Yes. Talk about your company. Sure, uh, Versus Foundation was created to basically develop and support new standards for interoperability across all of the different emerging technologies. We see that one of the problems with going faster is everyone going faster in different directions. Um, so we think it's critically important that as we start to look at the you know, internet of value, which is what the blockchain community likes to consider Web 3.0, but the internet of things guys see it in an entirely different way. And the sort of semantic web, internet of intelligence folks, and the, yeah. the metaverse VR sort of future world. We're, we're saying guys, the future is the internet of everything, so you need a fundamental protocol to connect these things. Then you can start to get smart factories and smart cities and smart supply chains that work interoperably globally. And given kind of where we ended up in Web 2.0, with a big sort of fragmented and fractured and yeah. uh, overly centralized set of powers, uh, yeah. we think that it's really important that we establish a set of protocols yeah. that are part of an open standard, and that's really what the foundation is created You know, Web 2.0, nothing really happened. It was just Ajax and no fundamental structural change yeah. happened. Yeah, social networks, graph, databases, but right. the world needs a better thing because it's not just siloed artists anymore, it's a lot of interdisciplinary factors going into the new creative. Yes. You could have a, a data science driving some value. You could have, yeah. you could have a UI or UX, but the foundational footprint seems to be what you guys are working on. That's Is true. that kind of how I see Yeah, we believe we need a new infrastructure tier um, for the next era of the web. Um, and it's primarily because the interface is, is changing. Yeah. I mean, it's changed every 15 years almost on the dot, right? From mainframe to desktop to laptop to mobile yeah. to you know, wearables. The next wearable goes on the face. You know, you got Apple, Google, Samsung, Intel, everyone focused on developing AR or VR you know, yeah. smart glasses. Uh, the reality is that then content is placed in a space, not on a page. Yeah. And the web was designed for interactions between page, you know, people navigating between pages, yeah. inter interacting with media and text but with an internet of things world yeah. that has nothing to do with the web and virtual and augmented reality that have no connection to that either, how do you, how do you have all this work interoperably? So we have a spatial protocol that actually lets spaces have sort of spatial domains, like web domains, and the ability to create a spatial URL and an asset ID for any object. Then you can, people and things and currencies can interoperably move between them. And then you can wake it, awaken an entirely new developer yeah. class that's building spatial applications that are also decentralized and secure. Um, and that then enables the sort of creative era, I think, uh, of, of development. As we move a bit out of the information age and maybe into what some are calling yeah. the imagination age. So enabling's the key word, right? You got, you're enabling technology. How's it going? Give us some updates on what you guys are working on. Where's the progress of this? Yeah. Because yeah, we need an underlying baseline to create value. Otherwise right. it's fragmented. Yeah, world. I think one of the big trends I've been hearing at the conference is uh, the word interoperability is finally a term that everyone's starting to consider. Uh, the, the industry is still very young and so in the beginning everyone kind of wants to run their, their own direction and hey, I got another coin in another project. And now given the status of the market, everyone's starting to realize that interoperability and collaboration and standards are important. Um, you're seeing a lot of companies that are creating bridges between yeah. you know, sort of middleware providers. Uh, I think that that's that's really critical. Um, so, where are you guys at on the protocol? Is it deployed? Is it under development? Yeah, so we hit MVP about six months ago. Uh, uh, our proof of concept stage, where we were confident then that we were going to be able to deliver this at scale. Um, we've been able to track some really, really am amazing developers on the team. Folks we've pulled from Microsoft Hololens and and uh, uh, Google and Samsung and uh, Magic Leap and others. Yeah. Kind of the, the the tip of the spear of these technologies. Uh, we will be launching 
our beta at the end of this year. We've got about 20 partners that have uh, already signed up to do pilots with us across 20 different industries. Advertising, uh, uh, entertainment, uh, IMAX partnership, which we which Live we just streamers? Announced. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean look at it, we're horrible. You, this is not immersive, although it's live. Imagine having a hologram here. Yeah, and you so know. you know it's funny because I, we talk about this idea of holoportation, and it's it's very sci-fi, very kind of Star Trek, right? Yeah. Um, and then I remind people that you know we teleport our voices to each other yeah. all the time. We're teleporting images to everybody right now, and uh, that's like you know 150 years ago that would just sound totally. Well, you insane. bring a community into it too. Think about the community impact, right? Yes. If you're doing content like we're doing, yeah. Imagine bringing Brock Pierce in or someone we want to bring from the community Instantly. with us right now, right. not the Telegram chat or something. Yes. Yeah. That's where people want to see yeah. content. And so you know the funny thing is we, we've been watching these sci-fi films for for decades, right? And, and watching how holograms and things sort of poured in and out and, and how people interact with these things and moving through different virtual worlds, yeah. robots able to do transactions, you know, yeah. the new Blade Runner, there's a whole scene around that. Yeah. Uh, versus actually the basis of our technology makes that now possible. Yeah. You obviously need the new interface, but that's what's coming. I mean, you're coming. seeing cameras everywhere. So for instance, in San Francisco, the new Warrior Stadium's going to have cameras everywhere. Yes. So why not have a protocol to give me a front row seat I mean, it's not Ready Player One yet coming, but it's still right. going there. We need better content. Yeah. Is this what you guys are trying to solve? Uh, really what we're, we're, well, fundamentally what we're trying to solve is that um, we recognize that we've got really significant challenges with our, these new technologies. They're just, artificial intelligence is so powerful. Yeah. The Internet of Things is so incredibly powerful. Um, virtual and augmented reality, because you're now experiencing something, yeah. it's it's incredibly powerful, and people have very transformative experiences. Yeah. I've seen people come out laughing hysterically, crying hysterically. You know, you can literally walk in someone else's shoes. So, when we talk about exponential technologies converging, that's a lot of power. That's power yeah. that we can funnel towards the kind yeah. of promise that we want from these technologies, or if they're fragmented or overly centralized, yeah. they can be used for all kinds of things that I think we would prefer they aren't. So Versus yeah. wants to make sure that we're, we're, we're working together in a yeah. smart way to try to get the best of these. The challenge you have is it's such a great use case. You know, the whole world's your oyster. You could right. go from content immersive to some low, you know, low-hanging fruit, yeah. IoT industrial applications. It, yeah, that's a big one. Actually, I mean, yeah. cameras, sensors, rendering, yes. accident reconstruction yeah. a, on a corner. No, absolutely, I mean, all this is now possible. Yeah, yeah. this is kind of where. I mean, look at blockchain. Some of the industrial cases are supply chain. Makes sense. Blockchain, supply chain. Right. You know, how are you guys prioritizing? I mean. Sounds like it's a challenge. You got all this big demand potentially. Yeah, it's it's the or how are you boiling the ocean sort <laughs> yeah. of question, right? Uh, the way I like to look at it is um, we're giving everybody boilers. We're not boiling the ocean. Yeah. We're designing boilers. So, um, you know, at the heart of it, we have some really amazing partnerships that have already been in place. One of them is with uh, uh, VR AR Association. Uh, it's kind of the, the preeminent association in the space. Four thousand corporate members. These are all yeah. the the Fortune 500 companies that you think of plus early innovators. They've got 60 chapters around the world, 20 different industries that they're supporting. Yeah. So we're working with the co-chairs of each of those industries, whether it's industrial or construction or education or medical, and then actually uh, creating pilots uh, that we can use as case studies to promote into the, each of those industries. Right. Um, so we're going, we're going actually wide uh, before we go deep, and then we're, we're trying to create advocacy and adoption and let, let the let uh, leaders in the space help us tell that story. How does people get street. involved? How does someone get involved? Uh, it depends what a someone is uh, right the now. Community at large, people want to join the mission, partner. Yeah. Is it open right now? Uh, it is, so at the moment you can go to versus.io. Uh, it'll kind of start you down the path. Um, we are, we're signing up partners by the day uh, right now across multiple different industries, robotics, um, you know, even aeronautics. I mean, every day we get we're, there's some new opportunity. So, come to the website, get started yeah. there. We'll route you into the Telegram channel. There's a whole develop, developer community we're spinning up, um, and then we'll have a Great. lot more exciting announcements to come in the next few months. I know you're busy. You got another video to do. Thanks for coming on the queue. Appreciate it. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Wonderful. All right. Great to versus great technology enabling developers. From work to play, a lot of great use cases, new environment for rendering objects, 3D, all kinds of spatial. This is the future of content. Again, work to play. It's theCUBE, bringing you live content from Futures Conference. Stay with us, we'll be back after this short break. <laughs>